Hello my dear students. Welcome to my channel Roshni Tutorials. So here in this video we are going to discuss all the important questions and answers from the chapter Albert Einstein at a school. This is the chapter from snapshots and if you want to learn the chapter thoroughly please go through another video which I have made specifically for the explanation of the chapter. So let's begin with question number one without wasting time. This discussion is going to be helpful for you all for your upcoming examinations. So question number one is I think I think it's not facts that matter but ideas. What does this remark of Albert tell you of his personality? This is very important question. Usually it comes in examination. So let's see the answer. This remark by Albert is quite significant. It reveals that he is quite confident and rational. Rational means practical. He does not want to mug up. He never promoted road learning. Mug up facts blindly. He is interested in knowing or learning ideas which account for progress in any field of life. It is clear that he has a strong probing mind. Probing means investigating. He had a lot of queries regarding things which are happening regarding the syllabus which he was learning in that school. So, Albert Einstein was a child who had practical mindset and he wanted to learn all the reasons behind the things that was happening and the things that he was asked to do. So question number one is clear to you all I guess. While writing your answer don't miss out these value points. Alright. Let me underline. First of all confident and rational. Then he never promoted mugging up things. And he had a probing mind. He had lots of questions in his mind. So when it is coming for two marks, you have to write all these three points. Okay, let's move to another question. Question number two. What do you think of Albert impolite or frank? Albert is not rude or impolite as his history teacher comes to believe. He contradicts his teacher in a polite and yet firm tone. He uses sir in his speaking to his teacher and does not sound rude. It is only due to his fearlessness and frankness that he is misunderstood. We know that there was discussion between Mr. Brown, who was his history teacher. Okay, and he misunderstood Albert Einstein because he was totally contradictory to Mr. Brown's ideas. And whatever he felt, he told it to Mr. Brown without any fear and in a frank manner. Therefore, he was misunderstood. Whatever he believed that did not go in tune with whatever he believed, he was firmly putting forward in front of his teachers. So, he was taken as an indisciplined child, which is not true at all. Because we know that in math class, he was doing all the works and not only that, he was appreciated by his teacher. So, we cannot consider him to be impolite. Yes, he was frank and he was not disrespecting his teacher, that is Mr. Brown, because he was using sir. Okay, he was using sir whenever he replied to him. Let's move to another question. Question number three. Why was the history teacher annoyed with Albert Einstein? Albert was... Albert never bothered to learn the things taught to him by the history teacher because he thought that the things which are in his history book those are not practical at all and they are forced to learn dates and the casualties which were arbitrary for Albert Einstein therefore he did not want to learn the things of history he told the teacher that he did not believe in learning facts and this fact is related to specifically history right now, dates, casualties, etc. He said he was interested not in learning the dates of battles, but in learning why the soldiers were trying to kill each other. This is a very important thing 
which Albert Einstein told when he was in the school that what was the reason behind the fight okay what made these two countries and these two groups of people fight with each other eventually both of them are human beings okay so what made them engage in a duel that he had to find out he was interested in finding out therefore he contradicted with history teacher the history teacher got offended with his careless attitude he asked him to leave the school if he had no faith in his school education so this was the misconception of history teacher mr brown because of his egotism he considered albert einstein to be a fool a dull child who disturbed the class but it was not so he never interacted with other teachers like mr koch who was who had high opinion about albert einstein so his own single decision cannot decide the behavior of any child here as a teacher he was a failure we can consider next question what is the theme the main idea of this biographical piece when somebody writes their own life history then it becomes autobiography when somebody else writes somebody's life history then it becomes biography so this is biography of albert einstein which is written by patrick pringle so let's see what is the theme of this wonderful biographical piece Albert Einstein at a school brings home the point that the school system curbs individual talent and that is true because children are asked to read those chapters which are assigned by the board okay they are not taught apart from the syllabus which is assigned to them if somebody is genuine enough then they will ask them to read different books and they will give extra work but at present teaching learning system has become so much spoiled that there is there is constraint of time because of which the syllabus is hardly completed and hardly we get time for any extra activity when we talk about the school system of albert einstein there also individual talent was curved obviously because no extra task was given to the child and the system and the system was not student friendly because they were made to write those things which are they were which were given by their teachers and if they deviate from that then they were punished so this was obviously curbing the talent of individual child it does not encourage original thinking and insight formation obviously when they are given question and answer they are not able to think about their way of answering okay they have to mug up the things which are provided by the teacher and then they will write the answers so original thinking was curved and insight formation insight formation means to value one's own decision okay they should be able to use their intelligence you know when they are facing challenges of life they should be taking decision by themselves and unless and until their intelligence is at work it will not be possible therefore insight formation is very important it's not that information matters always but insight formation is much more important because it is critical thinking it is related to critical thinking which a child should develop let's move ahead it insists on repeating facts by learning them by heart see the young einstein was against this type of schooling see here we get to learn about rote learning okay children had to mug up the things which were provided by the school and then they had to write the same in the examination which utilized no creativity of any child therefore it should be banned as soon as possible let's see the last point he was expelled from the school when he challenged the system when albert einstein questioned mr brown okay he went to 
headmaster and complained against him in the same way other teachers had also gone to talk ill about albert einstein and that led him get expulsion from the school this shows that original ideas are not promoted in education system then our next question is albert wanted to leave his school but could not why albert's father wanted him to pass the examination for his school diploma he was against his leaving the school so albert could not leave the school here we find Albert's father believed in diploma and not in the practical knowledge because had he promoted practical knowledge he would have listened to his son Albert Einstein who was not having a good time in this school he would have taken him away and he would have given him another environment to learn and think differently but he was focusing on diploma that is result that is why albert einstein was not having a great time in this school he was only appreciated by mr koch and rest of the teachers were against him and because of repetitive complaint against albert he had to leave finally he did not leave actually he was expelled from the school so it was fathers compulsion which made albert einstein stay there for a longer period if it had been in his hand he would have left the school years prior let's move to next question what type of life did he live in munich answer is albert lived a miserable life in munich he did not mind the poor quality of food he got or even the dirt and the squalor he was only troubled by the atmosphere of slum violence so here we need to understand that overall the atmosphere was not good at all a human being requires food shelter so that he can have peace of mind but here the food was also not good then shelter had lot of violence a lot of violence and because of unpleasantness around him he was not able to lead a good life in munich his landlady beat her children regularly this created confusion and he was not able to focus on his studies and it was you know disturbing his mind as well he was in depression when he was in munich on every saturday she was beaten by her drunkard husband so he had no peace of mind there he could not even play his violin as it irritated his landlady so he was not able to do whatever he wished whatever relieved him whatever rejoiced him so overall the situation was not conducive for albert einstein to study in munich when he was there for studying next question who was elsa what did she What did she try to make him understand? Elsa was Albert's cousin. She tried to persuade him to learn the things and repeat them in exam in the examination. She was cousin as well as Albert Einstein's good friend. But she misunderstood Albert Einstein. She used to consider him a stupid just like other students, but he was not so. even if she misunderstood albert einstein she wanted to help him anyhow therefore she said she was sure he was capable of doing so but he was not trying doing so he would get his school diploma he thought she thought that by repeating that is by rote learning albert einstein will get through the examination he knows how to do that but he is not trying to learn anything by heart so elsa tried to convince albert einstein to read things by heart and write the same in the examination so that he can get his diploma but albert einstein totally denied and said this is not his cup of tea he is not good at rote learning therefore he will not be able to get a diploma ever so this was the suggestion 
which Albert Einstein's cousin Elsa gave him. Another question is, what were young Einstein's interests? Young Einstein was interested in science and music. He read books on science and played his violin. Elsa found him reading a geology book. The problem was that such books were no use to him for examination purpose. So here we understand that he was a very good student in science and he had great inclination towards music but the books which were related to geology were not taught in the school that is why he was regarded as a dull boy because the subjects which were there in his school he did not like therefore he could not perform well in those subjects and teachers instead of understanding this young Einstein they randomly considered him to be a dull boy so this was the fault of the education system. Next important question is, how did Albert fare in mathematics? What did his math teacher, Mr. Koch, think of him? Albert took great interest in his math classes. He learned mathematics even beyond his classroom teaching, that is beyond syllabus. The syllabus which was prescribed by the board he knew much more than that his math teacher mr Koch, spoke high about him he was ready to write in his reference that he could not teach him anymore rather albert would soon be able to teach him it means that albert einstein had great caliber in mathematics he learned not only the syllabus related topics but much beyond that as well so this shows that he was a great student in this particular subject. So we cannot randomly say Albert Einstein was poor in studies. There were teachers like Mr. Koch who understood Albert Einstein and his caliber related to his interest. Therefore, he wrote glowing reference to him. What did Albert decide finally? Albert decided to leave the school. He made up his mind to go to Milan in Italy and get admission in some college or institution there. He felt that the reference, the reference of his math teacher would be enough to get him into an institute, institution for studying higher mathematics. See, he had great interest in mathematics. Therefore, he decided to leave this is cool because he was wasting his father's money, his time and his teacher's time as well because in this institution in Munich, he was not understanding anything. Rather, he did not want to understand and study those dead subjects. Therefore, he wanted to move to some other country and then learn after getting enrolled in some good college and uh, his interest lied in mathematics. Therefore, this was the decision of Albert Einstein. And we must say this was very good decision which was taken at very correct time because when he left this institution, then only he started growing in his life as a student and eventually we got him as a scientist. Therefore, his decision was very much appropriate. Next question, Yuri calls Albert the world's worst liar. Is that insult or a compliment to Albert Einstein? This spelling mistake, please rectify. Albert is totally honest and sincere. Whenever he tries to tell a lie, his voice or manner exposes him. So Yuri calls him the world's worst liar, which is really a compliment to him. So here we find Albert Einstein to be extremely honest and sincere. He did not want to cheat anyone. He could not deceive anyone. Therefore, when he had to ask for a certificate to get away from this school, at that time he could not lie and Yuri understood about his caliber. 
that he will not be able to lie to anyone. Therefore, he warned him that he should not deceive that doctor. And at that time, he told that he should not exaggerate the problems that he have. He should be very sincere in projecting his problem to the doctor. Fortunately, he'll understand and he will generate a certificate to him. He should not overdo acting. Actually, it was not acting. He wanted a certificate on the ground of nervous breakdown. And this was not an excuse. This really was the situation of Albert Einstein. So, we cannot call him that he was very good at life lying things he was a very sincere boy and this is compliment and not insult or comment to albert einstein next question is what did albert ask his friend yuri to do albert asked yuri to arrange him for a medical certificate he wanted the doctor to say that he could not attend school for some time as he was suffering from nervous breakdown. So his friend helped Albert Einstein in getting a certificate. Albert Einstein wanted a doctor to write a certificate for him saying that he has nervous breakdown. This he had done because he was extremely irritated by the school treatment towards him. Next question is, who was Dr. Ernst Wheel? How did he help Albert? Dr. Ernst Wheel was a specialist in nervous troubles. He had recently qualified as a doctor. He easily understood Albert's problem. So, he issued a certificate to the effect that he should not attend school for six months as he had a nervous breakdown. So, Dr. Ernst Wheel was friend of Yuri. And later on, he became friend of Albert Einstein as well because as a doctor, he was able to understand his patient's problem and moreover, Yuri had already conveyed the problem of Albert Einstein. So, less Albert Einstein had to convey it to Dr. Wheel. Doctor, and the doctor was good enough to understand and generate a certificate to him on the ground of nervous breakdown. Our next question is, Albert was quite nervous when he met the doctor. What does this show? Albert wanted a certificate to the effect that he had a nervous breakdown so that he might stay away from his school for some time. When he went to the doctor to get the fake certificate, he became really nervous as he was too honest, too honest to prevent nervousness so this shows albert einstein's honesty and sincerity he was not a good liar and this is compliment to his behavior his behavior was liked by his friend yuri therefore he says that albert einstein was very bad at lying it means that he was very truthful student Next question is, why did the head teacher summon Albert? Summon means to call somebody. The head teacher summoned or called Albert to tell him that he had decided to punish him for his extremely bad performance. He wanted him to leave school of his own accord. Otherwise, he would be expelled. So, in other words, headmaster wanted to expel him from the school because there were a lot of teachers who complained about Albert Einstein. According to them, they were not able to teach in the classroom when Albert Einstein was there because he used to pose so many questions to the teacher which was arbitrary or impractical according to them. Therefore, he had to be taken out from the school in order to continue with the general teaching learning process. But this was a drawback of the school because they could not understand a great child. The next question that is in our list is what reason was given by the head teacher for his 
decision to expel Albert. Let's see the answer. The head teacher said that the very presence of Albert hindered or stopped the teachers to teach and pupils or the students to learn. He said that he had refused to learn and that he was in constant rebellion. Rebellion means to, to go against, to defy. Okay, he went contradictory with his teachers. Therefore, teaching learning process was not done in the classroom. Therefore, Albert Einstein's head teacher had to expel him. In fact, he wanted to say that the, the school did not like his habit of too much questioning and his refusal to go with the established system. So Albert Einstein did not accept the things as it is. He wanted to question, he wanted to make changes, but he could not. Therefore, eventually, he was expelled and this was good for him when we consider future achievement of Albert Einstein. Let's move ahead. Let's move to next question. How did Albert react to the head teacher's decision of expelling him from the school? Albert wanted to say what he thought of the headmaster and his school, but he said nothing and came out briskly, holding his head high. He ignored the shouting of the head teacher to shut the door after him. This shows that Albert Einstein did not have respect for the school and head teacher as well because in this school he spent five miserable years except mr coach none of the teachers could understand him and his caliber as well so he did not bother to shut the door and this is a mark of disrespect and this happened because albert einstein was misunderstood even by head teacher so without bothering about head teacher's orders, what he did, he went out proudly. Usually, when students are humiliated and they are expelled from the school, they are very sad, they are depressed because they have to answer to their parents. But here, it was not the case. Albert Einstein was happy to go out and he was proud that his mission was accomplished. Even though that medical certificate became useless, but his motive was achieved. The next question is, in what mood did Albert leave Munich? So answer is, Albert had nothing but hatred for Munich. He left it without turning his head to give it a last look. He met only his friend Yuri before going. Yuri wished him well. See, Albert Einstein could not get any productive experience from this Munich. Therefore, he did not have any emotional connection with that place. He had five miserable years there and this had shattered him to the fullest. That is why he did not want to give even a last look and he met only his best friend that is Yuri and then he left the place. This shows there is no emotional connection between Albert Einstein and the place from where he went to school and even to his residential area where he spent his five years. He did not do the sea off to his landlady or anybody in his, anybody out there. Let's move to long question answers. What do you think of young Einstein? After reading the story, should we consider him a dull boy? Or an intelligent one or what was his connection with the education system let's find out young Einstein was an original thinker he was a practical thinker he found fault with the kind of education he was given he was not satisfied with that education system he refused to learn facts by heart rote learning or mugging up was not his cup of tea he annoyed almost everyone at the school with his constant questioning. He was an inquisitive child, therefore he asked numerous questions, but teachers and other people 
considered him to be a very irritating student that is why he did not have good rapport with the teachers and other fellow students as well he was fond he was fond of science and music he knew how to play violin he was an alert and curious young man it was his extraordinary alertness and curiosity which made him later a great scientist so here we understand that he was a rational thinker and he questioned almost all the arbitrary syllabus which he found in the school because of that he was considered a very a very irritating child and therefore he was expelled from the school also but albert einstein was a great scientist and this was proved in later life let's move towards the next question what do you understand of albert's nature from his conversation with his history teacher his mathematics teacher and the head teacher let's see the answer einstein was extremely self confident please underline these value points candid clear whatever he said it was very clear he says that he never believed in dead things or the facts and that was clearly portrayed to mr brown he was humble and strong willed as a young man his conversation with his history teacher shows that he was candid and forthright in his opinions let's see the next point he tries he tried to impress upon the teacher that learning fact is not education it is important to see that he showed no disrespect to the teacher in spite of grave provocation he was provoked now and then by mr brown because he did not like the presence of albert einstein in his class therefore he was given punishment as well albert einstein was given punishment as well but that did not stop him einstein's conversation with his mathematics teacher shows him in proper light proper light means his true caliber was highlighted here he excelled in mathematics in which he had natural inclination his mathematics teacher was all praise for his abilities the encounter with the head teacher shows how albert kept his cool and confidence in grave in grave situation so here we understand mr brown was not a good teacher and mr koch was because he knew how to you know extract because mr koch understood his child his students because mr koch understood his children very much and he was ready to help them as well that is what we see here in this lesson as well being a teacher he was able to understand true potential of his pupil but the interaction with head teacher was not very wonderful because Albert Einstein was expelled from the school that very day but in this grave situation in this serious situation also he was not losing his cool he was calm and confident and proudly he leaves the school this shows that he had control over his emotions as well emotion of anger emotion of hatred let's move ahead the head teacher accused him of rebellion and disruption einstein wanted to tell him his real opinion about him and his school but he checked himself from being rude so to some extent he controlled himself and then he went out without accepting the orders of his headmaster so altogether we understand him to be a genuine child let's move towards next important question which is regarding education system the school system often curbs individual talents discuss the answer is yes the school system curbs or destroys individual talent and an example is albert einstein he had great possibility but because of that school system it was not flourished 
So the answer is true. Let's see the explanation in detail. In most of the countries of the world, the school education has remained rigid and conservative. Rigid. It is not going to be flexible for any of the children. They are in the class and they have to read whatever is prescribed in the syllabus. Conservative. It means primitive, which is not according to the modern age, which is not related to the current situation. Each school evolves a system in which every pupil is expected to try to fit in. There is a system and every child should fit in this, which is not correct. Even teachers are expected to blindly follow the system. No deviation is tolerated or encouraged. If somebody goes out of the system to question, they will be punished, they will be thrown out of the jobs because teachers and children are expected to follow the system blindly which is so arbitrary because education is for flourishing any individual but it gets curved in this system individual talent are often curved a student who wants to study science is forced to learn facts of history this is what we get to get about the school in which young Einstein studies. Einstein had natural inclination of science, for science and mathematics. He was not interested in learning facts in, but in ideas. So this is what we have learned from the story that Albert Einstein did not want to learn history because that did not explain why those two countrymen were fighting with each other. And the dates were arbitrary for him because the battle which is already fought cannot be undone. It's already happened in the past. What we can change? The reason. By working on the reason, we can stop the wars in future. But teacher and the education system was not able to understand Albert Einstein, Einstein's ideas. He was called a disgrace to the school. The head teacher decided to expel him if he did not leave the school of his own accord. Strangely, most of our great writers, scientists and pioneers all have found fault with the education system. They simply disliked or hated schools for curbing their mental flights. So this is regarding individual talent, individual caliber and skills. It's not necessary that Whatever is there in the syllabus, all the students are going to fit in that. A child might want to become a painter. A child might want to become an artist, a performer. But because of education system, they have to read, read, read. And then eventually, they have to get a degree. But what is the use of that degree? If they are mugging up and they are writing the answers, this is not understood by anybody. So... Here lies the problem and we should not promote that. Even if it is related to the syllabus, we should give them liberty to do something extra by finding means for such things. Next uh, question is, who were Yuri and Elsa? What was their role in Albert's life? Let's see the answer. Albert Einstein led a pathetic life in Munich where he was sent to study in a school. Only his best friend Yuri consoled and encouraged him in his misery. So it was Yuri who encouraged him and who consoled him. He was the one to listen to all the sufferings of Albert Einstein. So he was a very genuine friend of him. Yuri was a sincere friend. He understood him very well. When Albert complained of violent atmosphere in area, where he lived, he told him about the violence in the student's hostel. When Albert expressed his desire to get a medical certificate, he referred him to his doctor friend who gave him the desired certificate. So, according to his mind, whatever was possible, Albert Einstein's friend, Yuri, did that. So, we can consider him to be a genuine friend. It is said that a friend in need is a friend indeed and this is apt for Yuri. Let's see further what is there in the answer. Yuri knew 
Yuri knew that Albert was impractical. Impractical because at that age he wanted to leave school. That was the period to be there in the school and study. But when he desires to leave the school, that was impractical for Yuri. So he advised him to take a letter of recommendation from the mathematics teacher before he met the head teacher. He wanted Albert to have something, some kind of certificate by which he will be able to get admission in next school. Otherwise, his career will be hampered. Therefore, he suggested him to get something in writing from mathematics teacher. And mathematics teacher, mathematics teacher willingly wrote that because Albert Einstein did excellently in his subject. Thus, Yuri proved to be the only silver lining in the dark, cloudy sky of Albert. It means that whenever it was troublesome time for Albert Einstein, he was there to help him out. Let's move further. When Albert was leaving, the only, leaving, the only person he met was Yuri. So we can say Yuri and Albert Einstein had deep connection with each other. Let's see Elsa. Elsa was Albert's cousin. She, she lived in Berlin. She tried to encourage Albert in his worst days. She told him that if he could if he could learn things by heart and repeat them in the examination, he could easily get through his examination and get his diploma. So even Elsa tried to suggest Albert Einstein to mug up and at least get diploma if even if he wants to leave the school. But that did not help. But we cannot say that Elsa did not try. She was obviously a very good friend of Albert Einstein who helped Albert Einstein in his adverse situation, just like Yuri. Let's see next question, which is very imperative. Comment on the education system in Germany at the time when Albert was in Munich as a student. So let's see the answer. Albert Einstein was sent to Munich school to get a diploma. About that time, Germany had a rigid conventional system of education. Students and teachers were expected to fit in it. There was no room for original thinking or individual talent. So we here we understand that Albert Einstein was frustrated because of the system which was not conducive for the modern child. It was impractical and therefore even teachers and uh, students were frustrated. Rote learning was emphasized in schools. The young Einstein was expelled from the school as he did not like the way he was taught. He refused to learn dates and facts by heart. He was interested not in learning when the battles were fought, but why they were fought. So, when the system could not understand Albert Einstein's caliber, he was expelled. But that was the loss of that school because wherever he went later on, he was able to successful. He was able to become a successful scientist. So his history teacher was irritated with him. He did not like his questioning nature. Teachers and authorities discouraged original thinking and disliked any deviation from the trodden path. The head teacher expelled Albert saying that he hindered the teaching and learning process. So we can comment here that Albert Einstein's genius nature was not seen by any of the teachers. So it was their loss, not of Albert Einstein. He was happy wherever he joined later on. The head teacher expelled Albert Einstein saying that he hindered the teaching and learning process by asking too many questions. He was called a rebel, the one who objects everything, okay, about the system, about the teaching pattern, about the syllabus, etc. It is strange that a genius like him was treated badly at school. It is a telling commentary on the system that failed to recognize individual brilliance, aptitude and aspirations. That's right, Albert Einstein's skills 
and his knack was underestimated by the school. This shows Germany did not have good education system then at all. Let's move to the next question. How do you distinguish between information gathering and insight formation? See, information gathering, that is what Albert Einstein's history teacher did. Okay, he gathered the information, but what was the use of that? That is questioned by Albert Einstein and this is called insight formation. The kind of questions he asked, this shows that insight formation is there in Albert Einstein. He was able to have critical analysis of each and everything but others could not let's see the answer information gathering is different from insight formation anybody who is interested in facts can go to a library and consult books nowadays most of the facts related to different subjects and fields are available on the internet those who get these facts and learn them by heart pass their examination with a good score in reality they are merely literate information gatherer so here whatever information they are learning it should be implementable if it is not useful at present then it is useless so information gatherers are many but analytical skills are bore by only few let's see who are insight bearers On the other hand, inside formation is a difficult activity. Inside formation requires a cool and objective analysis of the given facts. Like why those two parties or the soldiers were fighting. Can we eradicate these problems? Can we evade from these battles in future? Can we stop quarrels from society? So these are the few examples of insight formation. It leads us to new conclusions, discoveries and inventions. If we ask questions to ourselves and the resourceful people with their answer, we will be able to have a conclusive result, which will develop not only our society, but our country, eventually the world. No wonder a person like Albert Einstein disliked learning facts. So whichever thing was not implementable and usable, he used to ignore that. They insisted on knowing what a particular event, why a particular event happened this or that way. Things but ideas interest such people. So eventually we find Albert Einstein. Einstein was a resourceful person with whom we can we can understand much more which we require for our upcoming life so albert einstein was a patient child and he was if we follow him we will be able to change the because he is talking about education system if we can improve education system then obviously we will be able to generate many einsteins to our world and that will be beneficial for entire world we will be able to change the world upside down so let's see how much we have gathered from this biographical note and how much we are going to implement from the next time by this we have completed all the question answers let's see how well you perform in the examination thank you all for watching